Hi, my name is Karthik from Design School by WPAlgorithm.com. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to build smart headers using just Elementor Pro and custom CSS. What do I mean by smart headers? Well, take a look at my home page. It has a menu, it has a button element, and it has a background. Now, if I click on the blog page, or if I go to the blog page, you can see the menu elements are changed, the background of the header is changed, and the button element is hidden. Now this is exactly the same header, but just by using custom CSS, we can tweak it per page level, which is awesome, right? So maybe you, if you want to customize it further for contact us page, you can change the properties of the header. If you want to customize the header for any page, you can do it per page level. And not just this, you can also show or hide items based on whoever is logged in or if the user is logged in or not, right? All this just by using custom CSS, no JavaScript, no PHP, pure CSS and I'll show you how in this tutorial you need Elementor Pro to build headers obviously and also for custom CSS if you don't have Elementor Pro click the link in the description and get Elementor Pro first before starting out the tutorial if you have it already let's get started so in your WordPress dashboard go to Elementor theme builder right or you can also use Elementor finder to go to theme builder click on add new and build a brand new header if you want to learn more about it just head over to Elementor Basics playlist or design your website playlist on the channel and I made a ton of videos on Theme Builder. I also have a fairly simple header. So I'll be using this header to demonstrate the CSS smarts that I talked about in the beginning. So I'll just click on this and by the way this is using Flexbox container. If you want to learn more about Flexbox container, I'll leave some links in the description. Also check out Elementor Basics playlist. With that out of the way, I'll click on the container, click on advanced and under CSS ID, I'll give it a unique ID of CK hyphen header for this whole container that's holding this header. This should be unique throughout your website. So CK stands for my website, which is chowkarthik.com. It's a prefix hyphen and then put any name, add a number to make it unique on every page on the website. I'll do the same thing with the nav menu. So I'll click on the nav menu, go to advanced and I just gave it a unique CSS ID of CK hyphen nav. You can also give it any unique class name, but I'm just using ID. Anything is the same. I'll click on the button. I'll do the same thing with the button. So I just called this CK hyphen button, the ID. You don't need to type any special characters. Only hyphen is allowed, hyphen and underscores, I believe. So use CK hyphen button for this. Now we'll use CSS to target this and make it really smart. So I'll go to dashboard and we'll actually go to the front end of the site so that we can see our smart header in action. And this is the home page and this is the header. So how do we target page individually? So if I go to the blog page and if I right click on it and click on inspect element, if I view the code for this whole page, if I click on body, every page has a unique ID generated by WordPress and that class is added to body. Body is an HTML element and you can see for this blog page, you can see there's a class of page hyphen ID hyphen 44. Also, there's a class of logged in that shows us that a user is logged in in case this is me who's logged in and editing this website. Now, if I go to contact us page, you can see the page ID changes and it shows all the relevant classes. So we can use this ID to target this page particularly and the elements within the page. And that's what we're going to do. So I'll click on the blog page and I'll copy the class name. I'll just click once inside the classes. I'll click twice. I'll copy the ID, which is page hyphen ID hyphen 44. And that is the class name of this page, this blog page. It can be any page on your website. It can be a shop page. It can be a contact us page. Just get its ID by inspecting the page. And now we'll use CSS to customize this. So I'll be using both backend and frontend for this tutorial. Also make sure you have this header open in the backend and make sure you have the front end open in another tab, right? So I'll click on the hamburger menu, click on site settings. We'll use this CSS globally, right? So I'll scroll down and click on custom CSS and I'll paste the class name of the page. Since it's a class, I need to use dot. Also, you can be more specific by saying this is a body, body HTML element, right? So within that, I want to target this particular header and the ID is CK hyphen header, right? And 
ID are specified by using the hash key. Now we are inside the header. Now it's time to change the background. So basically this code means on this page and within this header change the background color. So let me just try changing it to blue. Update. I'll reload this page. And just like that our background is changed to blue. Now if you visit other pages they'll have the regular background. But since we just specifically targeted this page and used CSS, only this page will get that particular color. And you can repeat this for any other pages. So for instance, if I go to contact us page and I'll right click and inspect in the front end. It has a class of page hyphen ID hyphen 35. You can use that to target it individually. So let's actually do that. I'll copy the same code again, paste it. And instead of 44, it's 35, I believe, for contact us page. Yes, it's 35. So we'll just maybe use another background for this. I'll say pink. Now, if I click on contact us page, you can see the background is changed. If I click on blog page, it has a separate background. But home page and about us page or basically any other page will have the regular background that you specified. That's really awesome. So that's how you target pages individually and change the header within those pages, right? And this is not just limited to background. You can do a whole lot more with it. So instead of using random colors, which are blue and pink or basically any other, you can also use a hex code or RGBA value. Instead of using this, what if you could use your global colors that you've already defined for your website? So if I click on the back arrow and click on global colors, you can see that your website has global colors. In case you didn't do it, just go to global colors and define your global colors. Again, there's a tutorial on it. Check out Elementor Basics playlist. So you can use the same colors in your CSS code as well. You don't have to mention its value. So whenever you change a global color, it's reflected in the CSS code as well, which is kind of cool. So how do you do that? Again, I'll keep this tab open in another tab. Now, if you click on body or basically any other element, and you can see that there are a lot of variables and there's something called global color. So this is called variable and we'll use the same variable, right? Instead of specifying a color, you can copy the variable's name. So I'll just copy this variable's name. Within the code, I can simply say where round braces and I can paste the vari variable name, right? Update. This basically means use the value of this particular variable, right? So it's really awesome. Once you do that, you don't have to specify the color. And every time you change this global color, it is going to change your CSS code as well. So if I click on block again, you can see that it gets that particular color, right? It gets that particular color, which was blue, right? You can do the same for contact us page instead of specifying a hard coded value. You can go to the properties and you can see all the global colors. You can copy the name of any global color variable. Maybe I'll just copy this gray one. We'll copy. Just need to copy the name of the variable, right? Again, go back to your CSS and instead of this value, you can say var hyphen hyphen or var and within rounded braces, copy the copy and paste the variable name, just the name is enough. Don't have to put anything else. Update that. Now, if I reload the contact us page, just like that, it gets another global color. Every time you change global color, it's also changed in your CSS code and it looks awesome, right? This is another CSS trick that I wanted to share with you. And we're not done yet. There's a whole lot more. And you don't have to stop with the header background. You can change all the elements right you can use css to target other elements since we are within the header for with this code you can also use that to target the nav menu or basically any element within the header so you can basically have a login button and logout button or whatever right you can show specific call to action buttons on specific pages right i have this button and let's say i just want to hide it on the blog page you can simply do that i'll copy the same code only this time i'll modify it slightly I'll remove the background property. I'll add a curly brace and uh, I basically want to target the button and I gave it a class or an ID of CK hyphen button. You can give any ID and use the same. 
if it's id use hash if it's class use button id is more specific you don't need to use important tag in case the code doesn't work because id is the most specific css code if you want to learn that you can check out the udemy course in the description we're just being more specific here i'm targeting the button now on this page and within this header and for this button i'll use display none which is basically hiding the button for that particular page right and the button or the button shows on every other page except this page because we're changing the display property specifically on this page using css let's check it out on the front end i'll click on the blog page and just like that the button is gone we just have the menu but if i go to other pages the button is still intact right again this was just one line of code and we just did that and not just specific pages you can use another class i'll click on blog page and you can see there's basically a class called logged in uh, telling that i'm actually a logged in user and i'm using this particular website instead of uh, basically hiding the button on the page i'll use the logged in class to hide the button for logged in users because the logged in users don't need maybe this call to action maybe you can have a buy now button redirecting them to your course or something because if the users are already logged in you don't need them to see this button right so i'll use the logged in class instead of page id hyphen we're using logged in to target the button and the rest all remains the same so within this page within this header and this button i want to hide it right so this should basically hide the button for every logged in user and we can actually refresh this page and verify it now the button is completely hidden since i'm logged in now i'll open another window from which i'm not logged in now i've actually opened a private window where i'm not logged in and i can actually see the button on every other page but if i go to where i'm logged in right if i go to a place where i'm logged in i cannot see the button right so you can do all these sorts of things using just css and the last thing i want to cover is to basically target other elements maybe we'll just use the nav menu as an example to demonstrate that so go down again I'll use the header class on this particular page. You can basically do this on any page, right? You just need to change this number, inspect the element and find out which ID is there for your website on that particular page. Just change this number to whatever it is. It can be 44, 45, right? Based on the page, it changes. So within this header, I'll give space, CK nav, right? That is the class of this nav menu. I can basically now target the links within the nav menu, right? I can say A, which stands for links or basically these elements. You can make, you can change the font size to 20 pixels. So this is the normal font size. But if I go to that particular page, you can see the font size increases. Let's also change the font weight. Maybe I'll make it a bit bold, just like that. But on all other pages it remains normal but for this particular page just in case you want to change the properties of this particular nav menu well you can just do it with css so this is how you build css smart headers using elementor pro and of course custom css you just need to understand which id your page has and give your elements unique class names or unique ids id should be unique right and class names also should be unique for that particular element and just use them you can see that we barely wrote 23 lines of code to do all of that and most of them are spaces right it's just one liner code for each of that it's so simple and if you want to understand css like this i made a specific course to help you master the basics and work like pro in elementor because there's a whole lot of potential that you can unlock with CSS. There's an Udemy course that I made for beginners. You can check it out to learn more about this. This is how you can make or build smart headers. And as a matter of fact, this can be applied to the footers. Basically any elements on this website, but I just wanted to explain it in the context of a WordPress header. So that's it for now. Check out Elementor Basics playlist for more such tips, tricks and awesome things that you can do with Elementor and CSS. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.